This is my art studio known as The Deuce. This is where I'm working on techniques that I've developed throughout my career, starting with very simple screen printing and stenciling, stickers, posters, and then to stencil things on the street. Taking those techniques and adapting them to fine art in a more precise, sophisticated way, but hopefully retaining a little bit of that energy and chaos that I think makes street art so exhilarating and appealing. The way that I chose the 30 images for Facing the Giant, 30 Years of Descent, was just looking at images that I felt were important steps in my evolution, and also images that I'd never made as fine art prints. It's been exciting for me to revisit a lot of the older things and see subtle ways that I could improve it, but also transmitting the message and the aesthetics that hold up after all these years. The dominant image is screen printed, but it's screen printed on top of paper that is a unique collage with a lot of patterns that I've designed and printed, stencils I've designed, and then found elements like old newspaper clippings you know, and other ephemera. You know, everything that, that informs who we are is an accumulation of experiences. And when I looked at the way posters would accumulate on the street, Someone would put another thing over, then a tag would go over that, then another poster would go up and things would be ripped away. And the idea is that every surface has a life. You know, something that literally comes from the street, but also metaphorically applies to the accumulation of experiences in life. You know, it adds a real richness beyond just the graphic image to have all these subtleties. And uh, I'm also a huge fan of Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns, who I think, um, you know, bridged the gap between pop art and just the surface appeal of abstract expressionism. I think that it's still very important for people to go out and breathe the city air and allow molecules to collide and take some risks and not just look at screens all day. But I also am able to share my work with a much broader audience through social media and screen. But I'm trying to present my work in ways that address the real world. That don't get bogged down in sort of meta transmission and this idea of just living inside the digital realm. My thing is to just try to be authentic to what I believe in in the application of my work, speak the language, but not let the tools dictate who I am, but use the tools to project what I am. I'm fiercely independent and I can do a lot of things in solitude, but ultimately I want to connect with people. I think we're all, we're all social creatures and um, I want to make my life meaningful, not in isolation, but in relation to other people. You know, I can't say that a dream job is anything other than what I'm already doing, but that maybe I can amplify what I'm doing by collaborating with the right partners. And, you know, cumulatively, we can do some things that really make a mark on culture and, you know, not only you know, entertain people, but you know, make them think. That's where I think the sweet spot is in any creative realm, whether it's music, television, movies, literature, or visual art. Public space and, by extension, the world doesn't need to be controlled by the people that have the most power and money, that you have a voice and you have outlets if you're willing to take risks and you know, bend the rules. So putting that across through studio art was very important to me. My work wasn't just about breaking the rules or doing things that were illegal. It was about democratizing art. I, I feel very lucky that through my 30 years, I've, I've maintained an outsider spirit. I sympathize, I empathize with the underdog. And even though I may not be an underdog anymore, I'm, I'm applying everything I've learned to that same mentality of, you know, that, that punk rock spirit. Like, hey, me, us versus the world. It's still very alive in my heart and drives what I'm doing.